Hi ho! Welcome back to Naturel. In today's video, uh, I decided to actually make a video that relates more to the studies that I'm doing, which are uh, which is trichology. For those of you who don't know what trichology is, it's basically the science of scalp and hair disorders. And um, yeah, I did promise in previous video that I'll be doing some video related to what I'm studying. The first video, I'm going to show you what a scalp look under microscope and also talk about um, why we should exfoliate our scalp. Okay, let's start. Sorry if I'm looking down here because I've got my notes and some questions that I did receive and I'd like to make sure that I am replying to those questions. So. I'm posting a picture somewhere there of um, a scalp and a microscope. I did post this picture on Facebook um, on different group and the reaction was it was just crazy. People were like commenting and uh, loads of people were actually disgusted by seeing the scalp like that and say it's really gross. But it's the truth. That's our scalp, and I've 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 gone to many shows, I've, and the majority of people, so I'll say, ninety five percent of people, this that's how their scalp look. And my scalp used to look like that. It's only because I've been studying trichology that I've I've made change, and understood the importance of um, exfoliating my scalp. So that's. You're probably thinking maybe that person never washed their hair or they don't wash their hair regularly. No. This young lady actually washed her hair on a weekly basis. The last time she washed her hair was like five days before I took the picture. You can see there's a lot of dead skin mixed with product buildup. Oil is a bit greasy. She doesn't have an oily scalp, but she had, uh, she's been applying grease. No, it was actually oil on her scalp and also she had gel so that created all those mixed with um, dead skin so that's what you can see us black people we've been used you know <laughs> greasing our scalp most of the time it's not necessary and also either we use the wrong stuff to grease our scalp or we use too much which can lead to um, clog clogging the um, follicle. I'm show, going to show you a second picture. A second, second picture actually this is the result just after one exfoliation. I think it's amazing. It's amazing and the um, product that I used to exfoliate was the Philip Kingsley exfoliating scarf mask that you can buy online. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Philip Kingsley and also I just want to let you know all those pictures and the footage that you see it's not from the internet it's been taken by moi so it's mine um, so you can see the difference it's amazing let me put uh, both pictures together so you can you can really compare them side by side the difference is amazing now, our scalp is just an extension of our, the skin on our face, but it's been covered by hair. And the scalp has more uh, sebaceous glands and uh, more follicles than the skin on our face. The body actually, we have a cell turnover normally of 28 days, but with time, this process tend to slow down and we need to help the scar, the, scar uh, the, the skin manually to get rid of those excess um, dead skin that has been shedded and get rid of it and also excess sebum can actually clog the, spore, the, the, uh, the pores and sometimes harden inside the pore. I'm going to show you a picture here of um, this when I use a different uh, lens for my microscope, this is especially for seeing excess sebum. It shows you, you see, you see some red yellow dots, 
that's when I know this excess sebum. And when you exfoliate, you should get a result with less um, red, yellow dots, and you see, or it can be just pitch dark like here. So, when a follicle is clogged, your hair might be shedding more often, more than the, the normal shedding. We're supposed to shed 50 to 180 hair per day, but when you have clogged follicle, you can shed more. So if you're experiencing shedding, try to exfoliate your scalp as well. That not, that's not the only reason, but try with that as well, because that can be um, one of the cause. And also, by exfoliating your scalp, you have your hair is more, you have, you have, your hair become more shiny or in kinky hair, you have a nice sheen to your hair, you're bringing more oxygen because the, the pore is open, the follicle is open, it's breathing. There's no debris, there's no dead skin, there's no, um, there's no excess sebum like on, on the picture you can clearly see some point you can't see the follicle at all you can't you can't see and in the long term because that's where the problem is the long term not the short term you might not notice anything in the short uh, right now but in the long term that can lead to hair loss and also hair becoming thinner the hair actually take the size of the follicle it's growing in uh, that is growing in. So, if the follicle is, the follicle is getting tighter and tighter, small is getting smaller, the hair will get thinner as well. Now, I'm not saying that people have thin hair, uh, fine hair, don't have healthy hair. No. I'm talking about this, a follicle that is that that is shrinking. That's not right. So a cause of that could be also obstruction, dead skin that need to be go, going, excess sebum that need to be cleared. So it's very important to exfoliate our scalp. Now, how often do you exfoliate your scalp? The recommendation I'm talking as a trichologist or a trichologist student is once a week before you shampoo your scalp. You do that before. Now, I know there's people who only shampoo their hair like twice a month or once a month. Do it before you shampoo. It's better to do something than doing nothing at all. We're talking about prevention here. You don't want to see the problem arising and then start looking for solution. So, it, in a way, it's a bit sad. I think nowadays we concentrate only on the length of the hair, but we tend to forget that when we have a healthy scalp, because that's where everything starts, healthy scalp, the scalp is, uh, is leaving, the, the, the hair is dead. When we have a healthy scalp, the length which we, we follow. So, it's just a matter of retaining that length and preserving the fiber that's coming out of that scalp. So looking after the scalp, it's very important, very, very important. And exfoliating will help as well for people who suffer from dandruff, even for people who suffer from uh, eczema and uh, psoriasis. What can you use to exfoliate your scalp? I prefer exfoliator made of fruit enzyme or salicylic acid because they work on softening those uh, dead skin and then make it easier for the shampoo to remove it at, to, to remove it when you, you, you wash your hair. They will soften the dead skin and also they will um, remove the excess sebum on the um, the, the, the hair follicle. For those of you who don't know, what is a sebum? It's actually the actual um, oil that the scalp produce. But if it's, an, it's we have an excess of it, it can clog the hair follicle. Exfoliating will help with uh, scalp acne. Yes, believe me, scalp acne does exist. 
So as I said, the enzymatic exfoliator is very gentle and uh, is my first choice. You also have, you can use a, a paddle brush. Just make sure it's a very good quality one and uh, the cushioning system is really good because we don't want to traumatize the scalp and also the um, you have all the little balls on the um, bristle. Nothing is missing because otherwise you will scratch the scalp and uh, we don't want that. Now you look at it, it looks scary, especially for natural hair. But there is a way of using the paddle brush to exfoliate the scalp without breaking your hair and without actually touching the hair. Think of it of a broom and your scalp is um, the floor and you're using your broom to remove all the dirt on the, the soil, uh, on the, um, the floor. So that's exactly what we'll be doing with this. It's easy for people who have relaxed hair or have uh, straight Hair, curly hair I have to demonstrate how to to use this to, so that it's very effective the only thing I'll say with a paddle brush it will just remove the excess dead skin though it won't remove any excess um, sebum now with all exfoliation you have to do it before the shampoo it's a step before the shampoo when you use this the, the, especially the paddle brush Make sure you shampoo your hair after. And remember, the paddle, shop, the paddle brush is not supposed to massage your skin. The, the, the aim here is not to massage your scalp, it's to exfoliate. So we use it for like two or three minutes, that's it. And you wash your hair because if you don't wash your hair, <laughs> your scalp will be itching like there's no tomorrow. No tomorrow. So if you want to experience, do it. <laughs> There's also, you can use Rezor, you can use uh, bentonite clay. All Rezor and bentonite clays has loads of mineral that's really good for the scalp. I'll let you do Google and do your own research. And, uh, but they also have exfoliating property to a certain extent. They won't remove excess uh, sebum trapped in the hair follicle, but they will surely remove any uh, excess oil on the scalp and help with the dead skin as well to a certain ex extent. You also have a controversial um, ingredient, baking soda. I've never used that to exfoliate the skin, but I want to try that and I can post the, the result if you want. I can do a video about that um, to exfoliate the scalp. I know or OIS does a product, a scalp exfoliator with um, um, baking soda. I think it comes with a little brush. You can also use, um, which is not my favorite, sugar or salt to exfoliate your scalp. And I wouldn't recommend that for people who have sensitive skin. And sensitive scalp, anyway, you shouldn't use anything coarse or rough because you will hit the roof. Personally, any exfoliation with sugar and um, salt is fine for my body, but not on my scalp. It's, uh, it really irritates my scalp. And also, why it's not my favorite? Because unless it's, it has been made to a perfect shape, a uh, round shape, the sugar is rough. The corner of, a sh of sugar is, is it's not... It's, it's not smooth, it's rough, so by rubbing it on the scalp, it can create some, um, you can actually uh, create some tiny wounds on the scalp, which can lead to other problems. If, in any way, I'm not judging any, anybody, I'm just saying, it's not, I don't recommend that, but if it works for you, why not? I'm going to put a different link on the description box with different type of exfoliation that you can buy you can find them online easily or if you want someone who would like to make your own there's um one a, a simple one you can make with aloe uh, aloe vera gel and um some um ha acids that you can make 
But with anything, when you buy an exfoliator or you make one, make sure you do a patch test before. You don't want uh, to use it on the whole scalp and then it does uh, create an allergic reaction because every person is different. Just do a patch test on a small area and if it's good, then carry on um, using. Now, for people who have weave on, um, plaids, dreadlocks, I recommend you to use um, exfoliator with um, salicylic acid or fruit enzyme because it's easy to rinse, it won't leave any debris or any little beads that doesn't dissolve make, just to make your life a nightmare. It's going to be easier with uh, a fruit enzyme um, exfoliator. Some shampoo can help specifically if they contain salicylic acids or any AHA in them they exfoliate but so if you've liked the video please thumb up share the video subscribe so you can have uh, you can be notified when I do uh, more video like this and uh, if you have questions just post them down there also, if you have a um, suggestion of a uh, video you would like me or subject you would like me to talk about, let me know in the um, comment box and I'll do my best. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.